Hello, welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm going to be doing another tag. Surprise, surprise. This is the book addiction tag. And I honestly don't know who the creator was. I have looked. If you were the originator of the book addiction tag, please let me know. Um, and I will add you to my doodah thing of me. What's it? What's that thing called? It's very distracting having you on my desk. Um, what was I talking about? Um, question number one. What is the longest amount of time you can comfortably go without picking up a book? Now, I fear that if I answer this question honestly, I may get drummed out of the bookish community because the honest answer to that is that I can actually easily go without picking up a book pretty much indefinitely. I'm not addicted in that sense. Um, I don't feel an overwhelming compulsion to read all the time. Um, my addiction... Do you mind? My addiction comes when I'm actually in the middle of reading. If I'm in the middle of a book or particularly a series of books, then if they're good enough, I become addicted during that process. While I'm reading, I can't put it down. Question number two. How many books do you carry on your person, physical or device, at any one time? Well, I don't carry any physical books on my person anymore. In the old days, I would have one book at a time because of the weight issue. However, I'm a Kindle person now, and I have my Kindle with me pretty much wherever I go for a multitude of reasons, not just for reading, but also for email access and for internet access and all the other good stuff. Question number three. Do you keep every book you buy or receive, or are you happy to pass them on to make space for more? Um, I used to keep everything. I used to be a hoarder. I lived in a house with piles and piles of books everywhere. Every corner there was a pile of books. Um, but I've gone minimalistic now. I have one bookcase and I'm sticking to one bookcase. So the general rule of thumb now is if I acquire, by whatever means, a physical book and it can fit on my bookcase without looking terrible then I'll keep it on my bookcase. Um, but if my bookcase becomes full, then I will purge. Question number four. How long would you spend in a bookshop on a standard visit? Well, I have a problem with being in enclosed spaces with other human beings. I've always been that way. It's an autistic thing. However, if the bookshop is empty and doesn't have any other patrons in it, other than hopefully just one nice person behind the counter, then I will browse for 20 minutes to half an hour, um, as long as no one else comes in the shop. But I'm speaking actually in the past tense because I haven't actually been in a physical bookshop for years. I've fully converted to Kindle. Um, but in the old days, especially especially when I was eagerly awaiting the next Catherine Kerr book. I would hang out in the bookshop and browse the shelves while waiting for the truck to arrive with the latest consignment of Catherine Kerr books. I even used to indulge in minimal polite conversation with the shop staff. Question number five. How much time per day do you actually spend reading? This is very, very variable. When the voice in my head has said we're in and I'm fully committed to a book or series, I will read pretty much all day. I will wake up, do a few chores and then crawl into bed with my cat and read for the rest of the day until I fall asleep. Reading becomes my life. However, in between books, or if I'm not in, if I haven't had that magic voice in my head tell me we're in, if I'm struggling to get into the next book, or if I'm feeling obliged to read something because I need to do a review or something like that, then I can probably only manage about 25 to 50 pages a day, max. Question number six. Where does the task picking up a book appear on your daily to-do list? 
um, it's pretty much always before going to sleep. Um, the only time I'm really comfortable reading, especially during the winter months, is in bed with my cat snuggling and that will happen for about an hour or so before I fall asleep. Um, question number seven. How many books do you reckon you own in total, including ebooks? Well, I've done a count of the books that I can physically see with my eyeballs, and I've got 166 books on my Kindle so far, although that's the ones that are downloaded. I don't know how many are on the cloud. Um, so 166 on the Kindle and 192 physical books on my bookcase. Question number eight. Approximately how often do you bring up books in conversation? Um, never with human beings anymore, because I don't really converse with human beings anymore, not in the real world. Um, obviously, on BookTube, I speak to lots of people. I speak to all of you about books, so I'm not really sure how to answer that question. Question number nine. What is the biggest book by page count you have finished reading? Um, the biggest... The biggest single volume, I think, by size, is the Athelus one, the David Eddings Athelus, I think it's called. It's on my shelf. I can't even be bothered to go and look. Um, that's pretty chunky. Question number 10. Is there a book you had to get your hands on against all odds? Not really. Not against all odds. And the question lists a lot of options for odds. I can't be bothered to read all of those out. Um, I, I was never like Angela Lansbury in Bedknobs and Broomsticks, rooting through secondhand bookstores, trying to find the second half of the most important book that my entire life and future depended on. There was none of that. There was no Traguna McCoydes Dracorum Satis D. Question number 11. Is there a book you struggled to finish because you refused to DNF? No. I've reached a point in my life, and it's a point in my life that I've always been at, now that I think of it, where if I need to DNF a book, then I will just DNF it. If I'm struggling with a book, if I'm not enjoying it, then I cannot force myself to finish. Wild horses could not drag me to the last page of a book that I'm not enjoying. Question number 12. What are three of your main book goals for 2021, if you've started planning? I haven't. I have no plans. I have no goals. I tend to collapse under the pressure of that sort of thing. Um, and I'm trying very hard not to put any extra pressure on myself other than the pressure that just comes naturally as part of being a booktuber. Question number 13. Have you ever had the privilege of converting someone into a reader? No, and I wouldn't consider that a privilege either. I don't like the idea of conversion. I don't like the idea of people trying to convert you to their religious views. I don't like the idea of people trying to convert you to a different sexuality that they think is more appropriate. Conversion is a bad thing, as far as I'm concerned, and I would certainly not ever want to impose my views on someone to the point that they felt that they needed to convert. Um, the most I would ever do is speak enthusiastically and passionately about a thing that I loved um, and hope that that passion and enthusiasm might inspire them to possibly try that thing. But I would never try and nag anyone or force anyone um, to go along with anything that I believed in or anything that I was into. Um, that would be bad. Question number 14. Describe what books mean to you in five words. A way to escape reality. Yes, a way to escape reality. Or a way to enjoy reality. That works as well. 
um, depending on my mood, depending on whether I'm up or down and whereabouts on the spectrum I happen to find myself at any given moment. Um, yes, um, a way to escape reality or a way to enjoy reality or a way to appreciate reality. Yes. So that was the book addiction tag. Thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. It makes me happy. And hit the like button. It makes me even happier. And I will see you next time. See you later. <laughs>